the ability to cook food. I wonder if you could answer all these questions and whether you're going to review the company and its actions to see if it's actually good for the, pro for the project. There have been a number of questions raised about the uh, company that was hired to provide these uh, debit cards for migrants to purchase food. Um, several questions, including um, the amount of money that they're getting paid, the fact that the same company was fired in Detroit because it was giving information about the credit card holders to ICE, and also questions about whether these uh, debit cards for food are um, good for people who are in hotels and don't have the ability to cook food. I wonder if you could answer all these questions and whether you're going to review the company and its actions to see if it's actually good for the, pro for the project. So uh, we, we have to be, uh, I gave a mandate to the team, um, particularly our budget director, uh, Jack Chihai, uh, and stated we have to find a 20% uh, decrease in the dollars that we are spending on migrants and asylum seekers. We have to find rate ways to cut cor corners and bring down the costs. And while we're doing that, we also wanted to address the food waste issue, which, uh, mind you, 90% of the people were consuming the food, but there still was a 10%, and we want to find a zero uh, loss to taxpayers' dollars, you know, uh, 177,000 people, we're required to give them three meals a day, we're required to uh, accommodate them and house them and their cleaning and all the other things, and what this city has done without the support that we believe we should be getting from the national government, we have been picking up uh, the responsibility of doing so, and we've done a great job in doing so. International leaders have come and realized what we have done. Specifically with this card, it's a 500-person pilot project to see if it's successful. It is going to save us an area of $7.2 million a year. Uh, I believe $600,000 uh, a month. If we, just set, ha if we just sit back and just state we're going to uh, just allow people to be here forever— and just continue to hint taxpayers with dollars, not trying things new and different, we're not going to solve this problem. We are using this pilot to see if we're successful. Successful, We're going to expand it if we're successful because we got to find successful ways of bringing down the cost and dealing with this crisis that taxpayers should not be paying. And um, First Deputy Mayor Wright will go into the particulars of it. We, we attempted to go over it the other uh, last week, I think, where we laid out last Monday the exact bullets of this so it could be explained. And so people want to give the impression uh, that um, we did this in the cloak of secrecy, uh, that we're not saving money. That's just inaccurate. Inaccurate. Uh, uh, DM Wright, you want to go over it? Do you think that the company was carefully enough vetted so that you were protecting the city? I mean, it was, I know it was an emergency contract, but um, were there other people that could have provided the same service for less money? You know, is it, are you getting the best bang for your buck? Uh, without a doubt, and the DM would go, uh, first deputy mayor would go over that. Um, and as I indicated, uh, you know, there are several things I'm attempting to do in the city. One, to use technology. Uh, two, MWBEs. You know, uh, women and minority-owned businesses have historically been locked out. When you looked at the dismal numbers that uh, women and minority-owned businesses have been providing. And how do we recycle our dollars? This program is not going to go to a large major firm. It's going back to small bodegas, grocery stores, people who hire locally. And to some people, you know, we're pushing against the historical norm. You know, we've denied these local entities and we've denied these small women and minority owned businesses. So I know I'm disrupting what people traditionally would like for us to do. But I've made it clear from the beginning. We're going to reinvest in small businesses. We're going to go after women and minority-owned businesses because it is embarrassing how much business we do with women and minority-owned on, on, on businesses. And this company has a unique way that I would like to see, if it's successful, to expand on using a product of this nature. But, um, DM, you want to go into? Yeah. I think that's not true, Marsha. So I think we should... I think 
I read a lot of stories that <laughs> also, Marcia, that wasn't a that, that wasn't a, that wasn't a story by the post. It was by the Manhattan Institute, just to remind you. So Craig I don't know if he's in the room. Oh, there he is. He wrote a story two weeks ago or a week ago. I don't know exactly when. He actually wrote the story. Today's was not a story by the New York Post. It was a column by the Manhattan Institute. Do you feel that this is the right company to do the job since it was a no-bid contract? Yeah, uh, yes, and we do, even in a no-bid contracts, you still vet. You don't just throw out and say you're going to give it to anyone. You still vet. Uh, we've been looking at this product of Mochify and this concept for close to three years now. Uh, when we first uh, communicated with them on the campaign trail, we looked at the product. It went into my areas of products we're going to look at, like drones and uh, the dyslexia screening. There was a host of things that we've, we've, we, we looked at. And so this is not something that just popped up last year. We've been looking at products of running our city more efficiently, and this was one of the products that we looked at. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, I think there were a lot of kind of inaccuracies in the in the uh, was it an article as Colin. you said in the opinion piece that was in the post. One, um, the giving data that, I, that is, I, I don't believe that that's true at all. Um, that this there was a rigorous process to evaluate the vendor. It was approved by the controller in the fashion that all of the, the contracts have been approved. Uh, one thing also to clarify, the $53 million contract is if it is at scale. Uh, we are starting with 500 families, um, and so that's a, a subset of the $53 million, and the maximum that would go to Mochify is about $2 million, all of the balance of the, the, the resources that the potential resources on the contract would, in fact, go to uh, the families to buy food and baby supplies. So that's just some clarity and some facts uh, as opposed to what was in the opinion piece. That's still a good thing for them to do since they may lack the ability to cook the food. Well, this is they, they can buy cooked food. Um, they can buy uh, food that's more culturally appropriate. And there's a certainly it, it's monitored and there's a limitation on in the amount of food they can buy. And it's it aligns with a SNAP beneficiary in terms of the uh, food that is available to them. And, and so, hold on a minute, because this is important, because there was so much uh, information that was put out there. It gave the impression uh, that the 50-something million was going to, to Mochify just for administrative course. That is just not true. It's not true. And then it states that, you know, we are uh, going to spend billions of dollars this is going to cost us less. We, you know, I was very clear with the with the team. We're going to bring down the cost of migrant and asylum seekers. That was the goal of bringing down the cost, and we're finding ways to do so. And so we didn't roll this out with every migrant asylum seeker that we had. We said, no, let's do this a 500 person pilot to see if it's e effective. And so our three goals: MWBE, bring down the cost, bring down food waste invest money locally into the economy uh, which many of our local businesses are, are hurting uh, this is this checks the boxes this checks the boxes and hopefully it is as successful as we anticipate then we could expand it uh, even greater and we can use this concept in other places that we are providing food services I don't want tax dollars going outside the city to buy from large corporations outside the city. We want to invest locally in our local economy. They hire locally. It'll deal with our unemployment issue. So our holistic approach to government is different the way of this. We want a holistic approach, one solution to solve a multitude of problems. That is how we operate. And the last thing I'll say is that they've been very successful in other major cities like Los Angeles and others. Uh, where they've expanded their their product and their platform. Don't have the ability to cook food. I wonder if you could answer all these questions and whether you're going to lost the taxpayers' dollars. You know, uh, 177 thousand. All the other things, and what this city has done without several questions, including um, the amount of money that they're getting paid. The fact that the same company was fired in Detroit because it was giving information. Consuming the food, but they said it was a 10%, and we want to find a zero 
uh, out, required to uh, accommodate them and house them and they're cleaning. And so uh, we, we have to be, uh, I gave a mandate to the team, uh, particularly our budget. Review the company and its actions to see if it's actually fit for the problem on migrants and asylum seekers. We have to find rate ways to cut corners. About the credit card holders to ICE, and also questions about whether these uh, debit cards for migrants to purchase food. Um, and bring down the cost. And while we're doing that, we also wanted to address the director, uh, Jack Jihad, uh, and stated we have to find 